Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Thursday, February the 6th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, power tripping police, handcuffing life saving firefighter. Then, alternative media forces Subway to remove harmful chemicals from their food. And snipers dismantle a California power station. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I can almost hear it now. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh my gosh, I'm secret agent. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Well, in a story that underscores the fragility and the vulnerability of our power grid, we learned today that in just 19 minutes, snipers destroyed 17 transformers. This is a story from Michael Snyder that appeared on InfoWars today. Now, Wall Street Journal also reported on this. They said the attack began just before 1 a.m. on April the 16th last year, 2013 when someone slipped into an underground vault not far from a busy freeway and cut fiber optic telephone cables. The attack was the most significant incident of domestic terrorism involving the grid that has ever occurred. That was a quote from John Wellinghoff, who was chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission at the time. Now, he's the one who released the information. He was concerned that it's been nearly a year, there's been no apprehension of anyone, and there's been no mention of this anywhere. This is a very, very sophisticated attack. The article goes on to say that evidence found at the scene included more than 100 fingerprint-free shell casings and little piles of rocks that appear to have been left by an advanced scout to tell the attackers where to get the best shots. This was out of commission, this nuclear, this uh, electrical facility was out of commission for 27 days. It took a long time to repair this. This was not some vandalism. This was not hunters taking some wild shots at something. This was a very professional, very precisely timed operation. These guys left one minute before the police got there. So whether this was our government or another government, these were highly trained individuals. It looked like a dry run for something, whether it was a false flag attack or an attack from another country, we don't know. We'll wait to see what happens. Now, the corporate media is telling us that Al-Qaeda, Syrian terrorists are now threatening the U.S. and the U.K., but Kurt Nembo points out that there's some reasons to question whether that's really the truth or not. The group that is backed by NATO against Syria went to Facebook later in the day and stated that it had no intention of targeting Britain. And they're based out of Britain. Now, these are our own CIA-grown terrorists. And even though they continue to threaten the U.S., according to the corporate media, what they said on Facebook later in the day, this group is called Riyadh al-Tahid, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. They said they disavowed the threat on Facebook and said the group has no intention of attacking targets in Britain. And these pictures show the White House, but this is a British-based group. Now, we do know that spy agencies in the U.S. have been engaged in false flag cyber attacks. This is common knowledge. We know about the Stutznet, Stutznet virus. We also know from Aaron Schwartz before he was suicided as he was fighting CISPA. He said they're using this as they're using cyber threats as an excuse to try to enact CISPA, which was going to be total control of the Internet. And he said most of the cyber threats have been funded as well as originated from the U.S. NSA. Washington's blog points out that we've warned since 2009 that the government could be launching cyber false flag attacks in order to justify a crackdown on the Internet and discredit web activists. That's exactly what Aaron Schwartz had said. In another document taken from the NSA by Snowden and obtained by NBC News, an official said the unit's mission included computer network attacks. And he mentioned that among the methods listed in the document were jamming phones, computers, and email accounts. And this is the key point masquerading as an enemy in a false flag operation. Yes, they still do that. They didn't stop doing that in 1962 when they planned Operation Northwoods. That was when they were going to fly remote control passenger airliners into buildings and blame it on terrorists so that they could attack Cuba, not Iraq, not Afghanistan. The tactics remain the same. They're still engaged in false flag attacks. Now, look at this story from Politico that was on the Drudge Report today. They're pointing out that technology's biggest players are now hiring their first NSA lobbyists. This is Apple, Google, Facebook, and five other technology giants have banded together in their calls for surveillance reform, and they've now officially registered a Washington lobbyist on Thursday. That would be today. Now, of course, they're trying to pull back and save face because people all over the world not just in America, but especially in Europe, are concerned that 
corporate information is being turned over to the NSA and to American corporations. They're concerned that the NSA is engaged not just in political spying, but in corporate spying. And of course, nobody wants all of their information read by the NSA, especially in other countries. So they're trying to save face. They're creating this lobbying group. But does it really matter? If Congress passes these laws, is the NSA going to pay any attention to it? The Congress is not informed by the NSA of what they're doing. The NSA doesn't pay any attention to the laws. If they do talk to Congress, they just lie to them, as James Clapper did. So maybe what these tech giants ought to do is just go directly to the NSA and start bribing them, because apparently Congress and the laws and the Constitution are totally irrelevant to the NSA. Now, in other internet news, Facebook is deploying robots to save Blu-ray from extinction. This is according to Wired Magazine. But it's not so much, they talk about the technical issues and how Blu-ray is falling out of popularity and now it's going to be made popular again because they're going to use it to use long-term data storage. But there's something else that's very interesting in this article. They point out, and here's a quote from the article, those one billion users of Facebook generate increasingly enormous amounts of data, an endless stream of status posts likes, comments, photos, and videos, and the team of engineers working under Facebook are always looking for ways to more efficiently store all this digital information, and it will use Blu-ray discs to store rarely used data that it's legally required to keep. With the legal stuff, you don't care about retrieval time, they said. You just want to have it there when someone asks for it. That's right. They're going to store everything. When they talk about all the data, that's your photos, your posts, everything they're going to save there for law enforcement. Because the only thing that goes down the memory hole is the government's information. Your information, they want to keep forever. And if they don't store it at their Utah data center, they're going to require Facebook and other companies to keep it there indefinitely. That's why they're taking it off of their servers and putting it on disks for indefinite retention. Now, we are having some victories. We had a major one this week. Earlier in the week, we had a food activist come onto the Alex Jones show and introduce a petition that she had to remove a harmful additive from Subway's bread. And she got a record response from it. Here's what she said today. Well, thank you so much, Alex. You know, what was so critical, you know, I launched the petition right about noon on Tuesday, and I, I was on this program, I think, within the next hour or two, and it was really a f fascinating to see all of your supporters and everyone coming over to join the petition, and, and I can't tell you how many personal emails that I got from the InfoWars folks to, to say, you know, they heard me on this program, they were so upset about plastic and their Subway sandwiches, and that they were going to speak out about it. So I just want to personally thank you and all of your listeners and everybody who follows InfoWars. Alex, your team and your support has been amazing. Um, it is absolutely unheard of that any company has, has responded this quick in history, not to mention get 50 thousand signatures on a petition within 24 hours. People were very visibly upset about this once they found out that Subway wasn't using this chemical for everybody else across the globe, but only using it for us. Um, they were really upset about this double standard, not to mention that this chemical in bread is the same stuff in yoga mat on the bottom of your shoes it causes cancer because when it's heated it degrades into a carcinogenic compound that it's linked to lung problems and an asthmatic trigger um, people were very upset and, and there is no way for subway to hide now she pointed out she had never seen a petition grow so quickly get so many signatures so quickly and she'd never seen a company respond so quickly they had not responded for quite some time until this petition began before it was launched on infowars you can make a difference you can take action if you educate yourself and others and get involved and you need to remember that the fda is not there to protect your food safety they allow things in our food that they don't allow in europe and australia and asia and other places they're there to provide liability protection for these major corporations who are just putting these things in our food that are very dangerous just for cosmetic purposes, as we see this additive is. Now, in an article from John Rappaport that's on InfoWars Today, he says that 297 scientists and experts have now signed a statement that they do not agree that GMOs have been proven safe. This was drawn up back in October the 21st of last year. He says, this explodes the myth that the science is settled. Since that time, 297 scientists have signed it. You know what? Science is never settled. 
Transgenic genetic modification is a very dangerous thing. They're combining dissimilar animals as well as plants and animals are being combined. It's not settled. Now, in yet another amazing example of a power trip by cops, we see this article coming from Paul Joseph Watson. Cop handcuffs firefighter for trying to protect crash victims. And this, they said, this is ridiculous. The California Highway Patrol is arresting an engineer for where he spotted the fire engine, says a voice on the fire department's radio frequency. We're in the middle of patient care with patients on the freeway. We're trying to protect our scene, and they're putting him in handcuffs at this time. Now, this is similar to an incident that we saw happen a while back in Missouri. It resulted in a lawsuit for false arrest, and they collected $18,000 from the police. This, in that incident, it was a fire chief who refused, again, to move the fire vehicle, the fire truck, because it was protecting the firemen as they were working on trying to remove someone from an accident scene, as you can see. We also see this with an El Paso reporter who was arrested for filming at the scene of an accident when he was nowhere near the accident. Nothing matters to the cops other than that their orders are obeyed. Well, stay tuned right after the break. Alex Jones is going to have a report on the government's involvement in the death of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. And Leanne McAdoo is going to talk to Bunny Hunter about the right to keep and bear arms. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. The tragic overdose death of Philip Seymour Hoffman, the Academy Award winning actor, is an illustration of what a fraud the war on drugs is. He died reportedly of a heroin overdose of a particularly strong type, of course, out of Afghanistan, known as the Ace of Spades. And soon after, they raided and arrested four people in connection to selling him the heroin. Well, the heroin is processed out of opium that comes from Afghanistan. Before the liberation of Afghanistan in 2001, less than 7% of world opium production came out of Afghanistan. Today, it's over 93% percent, approaching 97 percent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is simply incredible because you have the war on drugs making the opium illegal so that the black market can be controlled by big banks and the government and so they can shut down their competition while filling the prisons with the low-level dealers.